Hey, how we doing tonight? So uh, this is Adventures of Casey on another video. Uh, also W6KCE on the ham bands and uh, WRTG420. We got the stoner sign for the GMARS. Anyway, uh, we are going to be doing the Mars mod on our 2730. And if you're tuning into this or if you've actually watched any of our videos you just watched not too long ago, actually probably about an hour ago today, we went ahead and we had to modify a 2300. And we are running into the exact same issues with our 2730 that we ran into with our 2300 as far as the internet is absolute shit on any kind of educational or usable video. Uh, issues that we are finding with the 2730. Uh, some dumbass that wants to say remove four different diodes in the same sentence when it's really only two diodes, but he doesn't know the fucking difference between 305, 307, 317, or 3 fucking 12. Anyway, we're going to show you the exact right ones to remove and how to do it on an ICOM 2730. And we are going to use all of our normal stuff, stabilize, tripods, fucking whatever. And of course, our colorful commentary that we are known for in our videos. Stay tuned. Okay, boys and girls, here we are. So a couple questions that popped up in comment sections from other fucked off videos where people didn't want to answer their own goddamn questions. So number one, uh, and we're just gonna start here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually open this thing up so that we can use it on uh, different frequencies which are outside the normal ham bands. This could be GMARS frequencies, which would be technically illegal, but we can also go ahead and use it on other frequencies that may or may not be legal depending on what you're doing, whether you're working with a volunteer unit, safety, blah, 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 blah. Uh, informational purposes only, I guess, on this video. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, we will use that. So, uh, case in point. So, the last video we, we did, we did with a uh, radio that was on 2 meters. And today, a, this one, we're actually going to work on a 70 centimeter band. Uh, which we know that on the ham bands, we are good from 420 megahertz to up to 450. But what if you want to transmit on... 462.7125 and uh that was, that was a question that popped up on another video i saw when i was prepping for this somebody wanted to know if if the radio could tune into half kilohertz uh frequency steps and absolutely it can so uh here we have our 2730 this is tuned into 462.7125 and uh right now if we go ahead and we key up find the right damn handheld there we go and it will tell us off and this tells us that this radio cannot transmit because that is off of our normal band now somewhere around this effing shack oh there it is i have a little handheld and uh maybe the handheld might have been modified already so we have it set at that same frequency and test 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 obviously it transmits so these radios they can receive any band but they just can't transmit back so if you want to go ahead and have two-way communication on these little ones this is how you're going to go ahead and do that okay so here we are this is our ic2730 base uh everyone that has one knows that normally the uh face plate it's either a separate or you have to pay extra to go ahead and get a um to attach it to here so this is usually remote mounted that's kind of what we do all right so the first step we have to do is we need to remove the cover on this and the cover we are removing there's two right so there's this one here that has the vents and the speaker that's not the one we want we want the other one so go ahead and remove those nice easy number one phillips two Now, a lot of people wonder why, Adventures of Casey, why would we want to do this mod when Gigaparts or Ham Radio Outlet will do this on my radio before I buy it for only $34.95? Well, the, the fucking answer is this. Inflation's going up. Things are going up. And you know what? In some parts of this country, you can still get two handles, complete handles not little fits handles of jim beam for that same fucking price 
and this takes well it takes a lot longer because I'm actually filming it but in reality this modification takes all of about I don't know maybe 20 minutes to do it if like you're paying attention and actually doing it instead of you know filming and rambling and everything else so let's see $35 20 minutes times 335 that's 70 that's hundred and five dollars an hour and I don't make that right now so I might as well just keep up the damn good work and just go ahead and do it my way right because those bastards there at gigaparts I guarantee you they don't make 105 an hour but is what it is all right so we went ahead and removed one two three four five six seven screws on this thing this last one's just not cooperating or maybe it's my second video and we've got enough whiskey on board that our coordination's down but anyway so now all you're gonna do is find yourself a little screwdriver boom and uh we're gonna just go ahead pop this cover off you can stick in between you can pry you can do all sorts of weird shit we're just gonna get the sucker off anyway i like to stick right by one of the mounts so that I don't mar and ding it up a lot, get everything just split. After that, it comes off pretty damn easy. It just go slow. No reason to rush into any of this stuff. We're not in a hurry. Boom. Now we got it open. Now we got to figure out in this mess, what are we going to do with it? This is the schematic that shows the actual diodes that need to be removed. Number 315 and 307. Okay, so this is the cover opposite of the speaker has been removed. This is the main circuit board. So back here is where my power supply comes in. This would be the front face. Obviously it's a bottom cover because the icon's upside down. You'll see, this is how you're gonna find it. You're gonna find these trend, or these capacitors right here. You're gonna come down and you're gonna look for this itty bitty little field here. Let's see. Right here. And there's two diodes, one here and one here. If you have a third diode, uh, you probably have a European radio. I'd recommend re removing that. That will open up your cross band, cross band repeat function. Uh, but these two diodes right here, that's what's responsible for limiting your use on the uh, ham bands only. So we're basically going to just go ahead and remove those and then we'll come back. But again, I wanna go ahead and point that out, zoom out, so you can see kind of where we're at. We're gonna zoom back in again, because this is the hardest thing to find online right now, is people actually talking about or identifying what field we're in. And it's really characteristic. There's only one field that looks like this. And like I said, if you have a US-based radio, it should only have two diodes on there. And those are the two we're gonna remove. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna take those two little guys. Now you can crush these. I've seen guys scrape them off the fucking screwdriver, which definitely is not the correct way to do it. Not really hard to just get a good soldering iron, the fine tip.
is one. And there's two. That's all there is to it. So once again, there's your two little diodes. This is what we're taking off the board. That's all it is. All right, moment of truth. So we saw at the beginning there, we're running our full 13.8 volts. Our little Astron power supply is doing its job. We're still on 462-7125 uh, to go ahead and do that half kilohertz step and uh, see what that is. And we're gonna go ahead and key up and we are transmitting. So we're getting it. So the other question that came up on uh, several, actually it was actually kind of weird. I never even really would have thought about it was does this mod when transmitting on general mobile radio service frequencies uh, end up actually reducing the output power of the radio? And that's a 50 watt radio and somebody was claiming they only had 35 watts. If you take a look right here, and this is by no means a quality watt meter, but it's going to be close enough. You can see our SWR might be a little bit high because I got some really fucked off connections trying to wire this in last minute for this video. But we're putting 63.2 watts downrange on a frequency that my antenna is not exactly tuned correctly for. So I would say uh, no reduction whatsoever. I'm not really sure how I'm getting 63 watts out of a 50 watt radio, but hey, there it is. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, you made it this far, then hopefully there's something in that last video that actually proved useful to you. We had a lot of hard times finding the exact information we needed for this. We had to go through several different videos and three or four websites before we found it all. Hopefully this puts it all in one place. Uh, Ventures and Casey, as always, if there's anything in any of our videos that you have questions on, uh, be it the overlanding truck stuff, the radio stuff, whatever. Shoot us a, a question in the comments or shoot us an email. We'll do our best to get back to you, answer that for you as quickly as possible. And uh, if we need to, we'll shoot another video if, if, if that's what it takes. Uh, if you want to see our new content when it comes out, uh, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, go ahead and get yourself outside. We'll see you out there.